What's going on, everyone? The Great Town here, and today we're going to talk about Aliens Colonial Marines. But before we do, I just want to thank everybody for stopping by. Don't forget to like and hit that subscribe button, and let's get rolling. So, uh, it is quite refreshing to play an Aliens game based within the Aliens sci-fi uh, movie franchise that walks like the old game from 2010 called Aliens Colonial Marines, talks like Aliens Colonial Marines, but is in fact not Aliens Colonial Marines, because that game was kind of a dumpster fire. But with that being said, um, Fi Aliens Fireteam Elite here is refreshing, like, keeps, like I said in the beginning here. Uh, while it does have its, its fair of shortcomings, uh, share of shortcomings, it is a pretty fun short burst Gears of War style video game, like squad based shooter, that focuses purely on the horde mode aspect of from the Gears of War games, instead of the whole uh, aspect of actually trying to be a game that has depth and lore and this, this, and that, which it doesn't. It has a little tiny bit of depth. There's a little bit of intel you can find here and there, collectibles, but through and through, there is like 95% just gameplay and 5% story. Not even. It's very, very little story here. Um, so, but if you're just looking for a squad-based game that's just, it gets, you know, it's very short burst, like a squad-based horde mode style, um, now I'll, I'll explain by that what I mean by that as we progress further here into this review. But, um, yeah, so this game is a very, like I said, short burst game. It knows not to overstay its welcome. Past four primary campaigns that stretch across 12 mission checkpoints, three within each, camp in each uh, campaign. And um, the mission che they, they count as mission checkpoints. So every time you create a mission, there's three missions within each, each campaign. Every single time you, finish, time you finish a mission, it counts as a checkpoint. It saves. So you don't have to redo it all over again. But if you die within that, mission checkpoint, you have to do the entire wave or sequence over again. Um, it's not that big of a deal, though. Every, every, Literally every mission checkpoint is about 20 minutes on average, depending on how you how fast you blow through them. Um, but what it does is it, this game gets you in, gets you off, and gets you out in fairly a short amount of time to get, you know, that without starting to feel too redundant. The redundancy is there. We're going to get to that in a minute, but it doesn't feel too aggravating the redundancy so I'm trying to say um, however with that being said towards the latter half of the game the tediousness and relentless the relentlessly shooting those xenomorphs enemies over and over and over again while spamming that reload button and your special move set buttons while after they finish cooling down does leave something to be desired the the game does get highly repetitive in that being that the majority of the game is you go from point A to point B you stop at point B, you defend point B, whether it's to like get a, a door unlocked or a security system hacked or a computer terminal hacked or whatever. Uh, insert MacGuffin here to unlock to proceed, pretty much what I'm trying to say. And that's it, folks. That's the game. That's pretty much the game. Although the final mission while running away from the uh, Queen Bee alien does feel intense as fuck, the rest of the game is pretty cookie-cutter, run-of-the-mill Gears of War horde mode. And that's just fine. Seeing as though you can wrap up this game in under eight hours, some people can do this game maybe in five hours. Like I said, every mission is like 20 minutes, right? So 20 times three is six, like 60. Times that by like four, you're gonna get like it's four hours, average of four hours. I stretched out to maybe like eight because I I kind of died a couple of times because I sucked during a couple of these missions. Plus, it was very hard for me to find. Uh, squad members uh, that aren't bots. You can play with bots if you don't have, uh, the, this game is three player co-op. Uh, if you don't have two other friends to play with, you can either search for a party online, which takes can take up to 20 minutes to find people at times. Uh, it's very long to wait in the lobby to find people. Not a lot of, I guess not a lot of people are playing this game still, or just not in general they're playing it anymore. I've managed to get lucky a few times. I kept resetting the queue, and I, I managed to find a couple people here and there, but other than that, you can play with bots to get it. Actually, I prefer bots sometimes because sometimes they're they have unlimited health kits, so they'll just keep like replenishing them to their health and keep lifting you up if you get down. Um, for the most part, but playing with real people was real fun too because like they you, they bring their own uh, styles to the mix, whether it be whatever they they bring their own sense of uh, stability and uh, you know their sense of accomplishments and their their different uh, um, classes, which we'll get to in a second. Um, but yeah, so like I said, it's it's gears of more in horde mode, and it, and it had pretty much gears of more horde mode is just you 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 uh, you set up shop at a certain point in the map. You just throw down your defense items, turrets, mines, traps, this this and that, blah blah blah. 
Um, and then you just fucking defend that area until the horde is dead, clear. Then you move on to the next area, do the same thing, wash, rinse, and repeat. Um, but like I said, if, if you don't have uh, buddies to play with, you'd always play with bots. Um, these missions actually have different tiered difficulties. You've got casual, standard, hard, extreme, and insane. Extreme and insane mode unlock at the end after you beat the final mission or the final uh, chapter of the campaign. Um, but uh, honestly, folks, the replay value here is you can play it on, on higher difficulties to unlock new requisition points, and to unlock in the shop, and new attachments for your guns, this and that, cosmetics. But in my honest opinion, folks, it's not worth it because the game is just, after you're, you're through it once, in my opinion, unless you're playing with buddies you just want to shoot the shit, um, there really is no point to replaying unless you really love the just the mediocrity of just shooting, the tediousness of just shooting repetition um that's all it is folks it's just very repetitive but it's fun for one single playthrough just to get the experience so like i said it does have cool moments in the game don't get me wrong that like there are some moments when you go to the hive you kill the eggs you gotta fight the, the run away from the queen you're fighting these big armored enemies and that's what i want to mention too folks um, there, there also there's there, there's uh, synthetics like those uh, average Joes you got to fight those white synthetic robots they go corrupt and you got to fight them and shit it's really cool uh, that's a different different variety of enemies uh, switches it up from the xenomorphs which is in the middle chapter two and three of the games the the two and the section the two and the third second and third campaign are like that. Um, but there's also, like I said, there's four classes to choose from, from Demolisher class, which is what I was, that gets a smart gun that auto-locks auto, auto locks onto enemies, as well as a special move set that does, um, there's missiles that you get, like lock-on missiles, and, uh, like a, uh, like a, um, what do you call it, a stun attack that is like a shockwave that stuns enemies. There's a gunner class, which is running a little grunt sentry, technical, which get, they get their own turret, and phalanx, which actually gets a nice shield that comes in handy when from blocking and lunging xenomorphs. And that's what I want to uh, mention, too. I did enjoy the variety of different xenomorphs present in the game, too. There was your basic xeno infantry, which is just the run-of-the-mill fucking soldiers that you can kill in two hits. Um, there's also the drones, which hide in holes, and they come out, and they fucking just start fucking raping you. Uh, the spitters, which are like fucking spitters from Left 4 Dead. You can just, they spit acid at you, and they fucking just, they burn you. Uh, then there's also um, crushers, which are like big armored fucking t bulldog tank like Xenos. And then there's um, the warrior Xenos, which are big, bigger than like double the size of drones that just fucking lift you up and beat and throw you and shit. And then the Praetorian Xenomorphs, which I forgot there wasn't even a fucking thing such thing as praetorian xenomorphs which are pretty awesome that kind of are like um what do you call it they're like these big big they're like like second best to the queen they're like half the size of the queen they're big fucking armor xenomorphs with big like queen like heads and they take so much fucking they're bullet sponges folks that's all they are they will take so much damage to go down the fire you got to use electric lightning whatever to try and they, just, they, they have a shield, then when you break their armor, they, then you can take down their health. And it's just, at the end of the game, folks, in the last mission of the last campaign, they just throw so many of those Praetorian Xenomorphs at you, you're like, what the fuck is happening? Um, I played it on, I played half the game on casual difficulty and half on standard, the latter half. I increased the difficulty as I got better, so I started the game in, in, at casual, then at the, at the mission three and four, the third and fourth campaign, I did the standard. And let me tell you folks, toward the end of the game, that final moment on standard difficulty, I ran out of ammo. I had no health kits left. I was just running for the exit. I was like, oh my God, what's happening? It's a very intense game, folks, at times when it wants to be. But like I said, if the rep repetition wasn't there, um, it would, I would have probably given it a higher score, which is I'm going to drop in a second here. But um, that being said, uh, yeah, so overall, if you're a fan of Alien like I am, and you, you will appreciate the short burst fun uh, that this game uh, derives here. Just don't be looking for anything rich in depth in lore of the franchise. That, in my opinion, is reserved for Alien Isolation, which is still the, my best, the, the best Alien game to date, in my honest and humble opinion. Uh, that game is just special. I will, I'm going to hopefully... See, the thing about Alien Isolation, folks, a little segue here. I played that game when it came out in 2014, and I swore to myself I would never play that game again because <laughs> as much as I love that game, I, I would probably give it a 9 out of 10 if I reviewed it again, but it just terrified me. To my, It's one of the few games in my life that terrified me where I was up at night thinking that a fucking Xenomorph drone was going to bust in my fucking room and then fucking take me hostage and rape me <laughs> because that game was so immersive where you... 
are just in this. It felt like Alien, the, like a replica of Alien One, where you're hiding from the alien, you're trying to survive. It's a true survival horror game, and um, I, I think Creative Assembly was the developer behind it. I hope that they make a second one because it had a great story that made sense. It was like a sequel to Alien. You played as um, Ripley's daughter. It was just so fucking cool. And I hope they make another one. But anyway, hello, folks. I know I should have the rails there. But that being said, if I had to score Alien, Aliens Fireteam Elite on a scale of 1 to 10, I would give it a solid 7 out of 10. It's a good game in short bursts. If you have a buddy, this game will be even better. You can just shoot the shit, fucking shoot aliens, run through these missions, blah, 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 not fucking worry about anything. Because, again, like I said, there's no story really here. The story is drop down on this fucking this research base in this moon-like uh, planetoid, blow up the hive, escape. It's just like the plot of Aliens from 1986. That's all it is. And that's all you need. It's fine. It's fine, folks. It's absolutely fine. And that's what this game is. It's just fine. So with that being said, that is my review of Aliens Fireteam Elite. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will catch everybody next time. Thanks, as always, for stopping by.